Well, what's this? The reception committee? Hello, Joey. Honey. Here. How are you? Fine. Well, I bet that newsboy stays up nights thinking up new places to toss that paper. Ed, Tell it's you come. Telling you I've got a half a mind to... It came this morning. I was going to phone you with the plan, but then I thought it'd be fun to surprise you. A moment ago, it was just another Friday afternoon. Where are my old records? Right where you put them last week. Oh, boy, they don't make records like these anymore. Um, you know, dinner will be ready in a few minutes. This was the heyday of the big name band. Well, I guess I'd better turn the heat down. Ah, congratulations. You have just become the owner of a Bannister Deluxe Model 7614B, the supreme achievement in high fidelity. What's in the high fi, Pop? Uh-huh. Uh, place the records on the spindle. Well, I've done that. 78 RPM. Turn on, off, switch to on. Allow five seconds for warm-up. Volume control. Base equalizer. There. Now, Joey boy, you're really going to hear something. I don't quite know. Bless Columbo, I'll never get another one of those. Glenn Miller. Oh, that's a shame, dear. What'd you do wrong this time, Pop? What do you mean, what did I do wrong? And what do you mean by this time? The man left his card. Probably closed. McAllister Radio Shop. Get me the manager. Speaking, Bob McAllister at your service. Listen, you delivered me a Bannister Deluxe today. Oh, yes, Mr. Walker over on Lawndale Street. Mighty fine outfit. Is that so? Well, your mighty good outfit just pulverized my best records. Uh-oh. Pete. Yeah? Another one of those banister jobs playing games with the customer's records. Well, I'm terribly sorry. It did, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't think it's anything serious, Mr. Walker. I'll send my serviceman out first thing in the morning. Uh-huh. I see. Well, we were about to close. Yes. Yes, sir. Right away. The guy's pretty unhappy. That makes two of us. Three. When is that factory going to get on the ball? When am I going to get a Friday night home? Yeah.
The detent ring wasn't properly seated, that's all. Should have been caught at the factory. Well, uh, it better be okay now. Should be. More coffee? Later, honey. Okay, I'll put another pot on anyhow. Why'd they put a thing like that on there in the first place? Well? <laughs> to save wear and tear on your records. To save? Yes, you see, if you play records stacked on top of other records, they're apt to get scratched up. With a banister changer, you play them singly. Sounds better, too. I wouldn't know. Shouldn't give you any more trouble, Mr. Walker. You know, I work in a typewriter factory, and for the life of me, I can't understand how something like that got bought. Look, I don't make them. I just fix them. drive over and tell those guys exactly what they can do with their banister changer. Did it act up again? Did it act up again? That set must have been made in a lemon grove. But the shop is closed now. Yeah? Well, I'll find out where they live. Can it wait till morning? Listen, they ruined my evening. Now I'm gonna ruin theirs. Give it to them, Dad! Ed, now you're getting all worked up and over what? Over what? Over a lot of hard-earned dough, that's what. Shut up, Bob! All those guys care about is a sale. It was like the third stage didn't fire. Joey. Don't you have some homework to do? Gee, but it's Friday night. Oh. Ed, now let's be sensible about this. There's nothing you can do tonight. A lousy, rotten deal. Of course it is, Ed. Now just sit down and calm yourself, and I'll get you that cup of coffee. Well, maybe you're right. But I'm going to phone that shop when they open up tomorrow morning, and if I don't get some action, I'll really blow the roof off. I thought you went to your room. But I tie is broke. Well, this is no time to bother Daddy. What's the matter with it? It's broke. Yeah? How's it broke? It's broke, that's all. Can't they make toys out of work either? Can't you fix it? I'll buy you another one. Maybe tomorrow. Oh, boy! You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna write a letter to the factory. On the way to Japan? Japan. No, I mean the high five factory. I'm going to tell them what a lousy product they put out. Now, don't talk. Right. I'm going to tell them how I'm going to pass the word on to everyone I see. I'm going to tell them that they're going to lose a lot of business. And if that serviceman doesn't get out here tomorrow morning and do the job right, I am going to add a great big P.S. And don't tell me, tell them. And I finished off by telling them that I hope they lose so much business they'll either have to improve their product or they'll be in serious trouble. After all, the only real job security a guy's got is the orders on the book for the thing he makes. Can't say as I blame you for getting upset. Mr. Too late Walker. today, but Monday I'm going down and I'm going to mail this registered special delivery to the president personally. But we'll have your set working just as good as new. It is new, one day old. What I mean is, it'll be in perfect shape. Just a small part, uh, the threads were stripped. Last night you claimed it would work and it didn't. This morning you came out and nothing happened? Well, like I told you, uh, we don't happen to have that particular part in stock. But we'll get one Monday, and we'll have it fixed just as good as... Uh, we'll have it fixed Monday. So what's gonna go wrong with it next? Now, Mr. Walker, maybe one set in a hundred has a few bugs in it. So swell, I got that one. That makes me feel much better. Look. I'll be the first to admit that we have had a little trouble with banisters. But only recently. We do have a lot of satisfied banister owners. Yeah? Well, you got one unsatisfied owner standing right here. Maybe I'm just one little guy. But you multiply me by all the other little guys and multiply all of us by all the guys we talk to, and, brother, you got some pretty unhappy guys. But that's just what we don't want. You Why see? can't they put out something dependable? If I knew the answer to that one, 
I'd be writing a letter to the factory myself. How's it going, Ed? Ah, uh, don't ask me. One of those days, huh? Yeah, one of those weekends. Oh, we all have them. Clippers in the back? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, it seems they just don't make things the way they used to. Boy, are you telling me? What'd I say? The magic word? Last night, I got a high five set. Bannister Deluxe, model 7614B. Hi, Charlie. Man, I was looking forward to that thing. High fi huh? High fiasco. Let me tell you, there isn't nothing that hasn't gone wrong with that set so far. And I'd advise anybody else to stay clear of a Bannister too. You see these clippers, Ed? Yeah. They'll outwear three of the others. Oh? How come? It's a funny thing. They both cost about the same. Mm -hmm. Makes a guy think. Now, here's two companies. Well, personally, I think that... One company more... puts out good clippers. People want them. Sales are up. Mm -hmm. Means steady work for the guys in the factory. Right? Right, right. The other company didn't do it. Sales fell. That meant cutting their schedule. Less work, right? Right, but Joe, don't a you? A lot think? of guys found themselves laid off. Thought they was working for a growing company. Come to find out it was shrinking. You mean instead of getting bigger, it just Finally began... went clear out of business. Closed the doors. Boy, pretty hard to believe that a big company can go broke. It happened. I could list you awful lot of brand names hmm. that were big once. Small potatoes now. A lot of them gone clean out of business. Might have been other reasons, too. But one of the biggest was poor quality. And you can't tell me different. How long do you suppose I'd stay in business if my customers weren't satisfied? Why is it a barber never combs your hair the way you want it? I'll get it. Jack. Hi, Helen. Jack? Hey, what's this about you not coming to the poker game? I'm babysitting tonight. Blame me. My folks are coming over for a barbecue tomorrow night, and I want to do a little Saturday night shopping. Well, are you sure you don't want me to mail that letter? Absolutely. I'm mailing that noon, Monday. Registered mail. Okay. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye, Jack. So long, Helen. Hey, don't forget the steaks. Well, I guess I'll mosey along, too. How about a cold drink? You sold me. Didn't know I needed permission. Oh, it's not that. Just uh, shut it off, will you? I knew you were waiting for a new record player, but I didn't know you were buying a banister. I've seen the ads. Been thinking of getting one myself. Before you do, let me give you the phone number of a good head shrinker. What's the matter? It's a sharp-looking set. I suggest you sacrifice looks for something a little more dependable. <laughs> What'd it do, electrocute the dog? One guy puts in one lousy part. That's all. And the whole thing goes berserk. No kidding. Ninety-nine guys do the job right, and one guy fouls it all up. Not always just one guy. Lots of things figure in. Engineering, bad parts from the suppliers, all kinds of production pressures. Oh, lots of things figure in. No. Those things are just excuses more than anything else, Jack. Not always. Of course, it's easy to fix the blame somewhere else when your own work isn't quite up to snuff. But those can be very real problems, make no mistake. But every factory must have about the same problems. No, there's something else, Jack. Despite all those pressures, there has got to be some key thing. Now, don't look at me for the answer. Just what is that key? I don't know. Unless, maybe it's the way a guy feels. Maybe about his work. Sure, it seems to me it doesn't matter whether a guy wears a, a white collar or a blue one. The way a guy feels is... Shows up in his work, huh? Well, it might sound corny, but it's true. Yeah, but how do you get guys to see something like that? Now, there is a real question. 
Say when. Oh, fill her up. <laughs> regular or premium? Uh, regular. Sunday drive? No, but I've got to pick up my wife's folks later on this afternoon. Having them over for a barbecue. Barbecue? Ever tried our charcoal starter there? No. Right up to the full mark. That fan belt seems a little loose. do a good job in my car. Why do you keep coming back? <laughs> oh, the thing is, I, I hate to have folks count on something and then, well, what I mean is I don't want it on my conscience. They lost out. Maybe what I really mean is I expect something from my dough, so I, well, I get a kick out of doing things right. Be 397. Get a kick out of it, huh? Another four bits if you want the charcoal starter. Oh, we better do something about this fire. They'll have everything else ready and the stakes won't even be on. Darn charcoal must be made of decomposed granite. Maybe the starter you're using is no good. Oh, nothing wrong with the starter. The guy I bought it from sells the best. Well, sure to catch now. We may not have music, but we'll have steak. Hey, Daddy, I got something that'll help. So, oh, Joseph, yeah. I know. Do you want to set the whole neighborhood on fire? Uh, you can start charcoal with tape. Isn't that... My letter. Joey, you burned my letter. Gee, Dad, I didn't know. All I did was gather up all the old papers on your desk. I worked all weekend on this. I was just trying to help Gramps. Yeah, it, it doesn't look too bad. Maybe maybe you could just copy it over again. Yeah, copy it over. I'm sorry, Dad. Forget it, Joey. Guess I can do it over tonight. I better go see if I can help Mom in the kitchen, huh? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh, the little guy was just trying to help. An awful lot of thought went into this letter. Yeah, that hi-fi thing sure must have stoked you up. I tore up what I'd written and started all over a couple of times. I was just plain mad at first, but then I kind of settled down and just asked a lot of questions. Questions like, uh, don't you care if people get a raw deal? Don't you want to give a guy his money's worth? Don't you care how many future customers you lose? Yeah. Don't you ever want to sell me another set? Something like that. <laughs> Well, I guess that letter at one time or another has been written by a lot of people, including me. But you'd think guys would see something like that. When it comes right down to it, their jobs depend on the quality of the stuff they put out. Some can and do, but it's not an easy thing to see. I spent over 40 years in a shop before I finally decided to call it quit. Believe me, it's not easy to see how your job fits into the total picture. I wish I knew what the answer was. What's that you were telling me about the gas station man earlier today? He gets a kick out of doing a good job? Sure, I like to cook steaks. Does that make me a better cook? Sure it does. All right, but not everybody loves his work. Of course not. But everybody could take a little pride in, in doing a good job. Pride in doing a good job. Sure, for my dough, that's the key to craftsmanship. Doesn't matter whether you're mowing your lawn or, or designing a rocket to the moon. Seems to me what you were really saying in your letter, though perhaps you didn't put it in quite these words, was 
no matter what job a man has, everybody along the line depends on him. And he ought to have pride enough to do it right. Pride in doing the job right, huh? That's about what an old-time craftsman would tell you. It's more than just the key to craftsmanship. It's a key to a guy's job security, to his whole future. It's that big. I'm going to write another letter. I think I know what I'm going to say this time. And who knows? Maybe it'll make somebody in that factory think. Aren't you going to eat, Ed? No, I've uh, got to go to the post office first. Uh, want to mail this letter, registered, special delivery. Letter? Oh, that's a coincidence. I got a letter here you ought to see. Uh -huh. Buck down to me. Customer wrote the big brass. Hmm. He wasn't happy with one of our typewriters. Had some pretty hot things to say about the alignment of our type bars. Alignment? Say, that's your job, isn't it, Ed? Thank you.